Wow. Okay. Lawlers, this is Varus for beginners. We're going to be covering off some of his abilities here, trading patterns, how you want to play this guy to destroy your enemy champion lane and win some games. So before we jump into all of the basic abilities that we have at our disposal here, we're going to just quickly talk about Varus's passive here, Living Vengeance. When he kills an enemy, he gains 22% attack speed. Champion takedowns grant even more attack speed instead. It's not the best passive in the game, to be honest. It's more of just a quick utility passive in lane to really try and start to auto attack down minions and push waves a bit faster or if you're in team fights and you kill someone you can start to pump out autos a bit faster so not too much to cover off there just a bit of an attack speed bonus now Varus's Q which is going to be the first ability we learn here is piercing arrow this is what he's best known for as a champion he is the sniper in League of Legends okay this is a long range skill shot the longer you hold down Q the longer it's going to shoot this very very damaging arrow and it's going to deal a bunch of damage okay so beginning the charge when you press Q and holding it he's going to charge up his next shot he slows down a little bit while he's walking as he's pulling back his bow and after four seconds if he doesn't fire so if you don't release the Q it's going to cancel the ability so there's a lot of wording here what you just need to know is you press Q and you hold it it's going to charge up this circle when you put, let go of Q again it's going to shoot that arrow and deal some damage okay now in terms of runes right now you can see we're running Comet so that just damaged the enemy champ a little bit more there Arcane Comet we're also running Mana Flow Band, Transcendence and Gathering Storm I like to play Varus very poke heavy so I want to get the maximum benefit every time I land a single Q that's what I'm after when I play Varus at least for me personally and I think this is a fun and safe way to play him for you guys as beginners so just look to kind of maximize that Q damage right so we'll just press and hold Q really quick here so we won't hold it for so long and we'll see how long the arrow goes so here you can just see we press and let it go instantly we didn't even come close to reaching that target if we press and hold it you can see the range extends now we can hit that target all the way from back here okay so it'll take a little bit of getting used to off the start especially with the movement speed if you have to be right clicking while you're holding that cue and then aiming to fire it it's a little bit of getting used to off the start so if you want you can jump into a practice tool like we're doing here and just number one experiment with the range but also experiment with walking around while you're holding it and then letting it go and shooting it Okay, that's pretty much everything we need to know about the Q. What we'll learn next is our E, Hail of Arrows. There's a lot of abilities similar to this in the game. I mean, it's going to have a different effect in terms of the visuals here, but all we're doing is we're firing a big bunch of arrows onto the ground in a circle. It deals some damage and it slows the champions that are in it. The other cool um, ability of this E effect is that it's going to deal grievous wounds to the champion by 40%, which essentially just means while they're in that area, they have 40% healing produced um, while they're fighting you or if they're having healing effects. So it's a pretty cool ability. You can use this to clear out minions. You can use this to deal damage. Um, and also because of the slow, if you land it on a champion, it makes it easy to hit your Q on them, especially because if you're playing against the real champion instead of a bot here, um, they're going to be moving around. So you want to slow them down with that E if you can, and then go into that arrow combo okay you'll notice our mana bar starting to get depleted and we really haven't even used that many abilities yet what you're gonna have to make sure you manage well with Varus is your mana okay some of these abilities cost a lot his W doesn't we'll talk about that in a second but the E costs a lot of mana so if you use that a lot you're gonna have to go back to base and you know recall fill up that mana bar so I would really use the E sparingly use it in really you know key situations where you think you're gonna chunk the opponent off with a lot of damage or if you absolutely need to clear a minion wave and push it into turret really fast but you use your Q more often than not as that mana source okay make sure you're saving your mana for your Q now your W, it's just a bit of a steroid for your Q, so again, there's a lot of words here, a lot of damages, a lot of percentages. For a beginner, without having to really dive too deep into this, it has a passive effect, his damage deal, or his auto attacks deal some additional magic damage and apply a blight stack for 6 seconds to a maximum of 3. If you use one of your other abilities, like your Q or your E for example, on a champ with blight stacks, they're going to detonate and deal some more damage. So passively just know that once you learn your W you're gonna deal some more damage to champions when you use other abilities on them or you auto attack 
pretty simple. The active is the interesting part of this here. Varus's next piercing arrow deals additional 6% max health damage. Okay, so what that means is if you press W and then start your Q, this next arrow is going to deal more damage. Okay, so that dealt 153 with the uh, Comet proc and the W, so we'll just quickly test out without using the W how much damage this is going to deal. Okay, we'll just wait for our Comet to come back up off cooldown. So last one was 153. Get this scuttle out of the way and we'll try it again now. Right, 104. Right, 144. So it's not huge, especially early on, right? Like percent he max health damage sounds like it's a lot. It's not that much. What you're going to want to make sure you do is you pair this up with your Q when the enemy is low health. That way you have a little bit better chance of executing them. Okay, so those are his three basic abilities. Now, in terms of combos, there's really nothing crazy to combo off with this guy um, at a basic level. Again, you're just going to try and snipe people out with your Q when you can. The only real combo in lane you might use as a beginner is landing your E first and then using your Q to kind of stack off that damage while they're slowed. Of course, we even auto attacks if you can, but you're going to notice that our auto attack range compared to our Q range is very, very short. Okay, so here's the auto attack range about this distance here. We would be able to Q that champion from about this far, right? So essentially double the distance from our auto attack range. So if you're learning him, especially if you checked out my previous guide, uh, beginner's guide for Ezreal, similar to Ezreal's Q, uh, Varus is a poke heavy champ that you can play at very, very safe ranges and still deal a lot of damage okay so we're just going to refresh the mana here uh, really quick so we can talk about our R we'll level up a couple more times here just to get to our level six and talk about our R so our our R chain of corruption very very powerful ability it's rare that uh, ADCs or marksman style champs have like lock down crowd control in their kit and what that means is they can essentially stun root um, whatever term you want to use to, to stop somebody from doing anything, right? We're going to crowd control them, we're controlling their movements, their actions. So in this case with Chain of Corruption, he's going to fling out a Tendril of Corruption, rooting the first champion hit for two seconds and dealing some damage, okay? So if you're in lane, if someone's coming at you, you don't want them to continue to move at you, you want to lock them down and get away safely, or you want to engage and, and free someone so you and your team can follow up with some damage, you're going to want to use this um, chain of corruption on them. Just stun them. You can see it dealt some damage and those those chains come around him and he get, essentially gets locked down. Now, the really cool part of this ability and why it's so much more powerful than a lot of other basic stuns and crowd controls that other ADCs might have in their kit is because this spreads to uninfected champions if they're close to them. Okay, so I'm going to spawn a couple more practice dummies just to show this. So let's say we were in a team fight. There's three guys here, right? If we are this one, you're going to see it has a circle, then it spreads to those other champions and roots them as well. Very, very, very strong ability in the mid and late game in big team fight scenarios. You can usually win the game for your team and win a big team fight just by staying back a certain distance and Ring the first person in the team line and then going running back and using your Q from safety. Okay? So we'll talk about this in a follow up video where we actually do a gameplay with Varus and we talk through some more kind of intricate gameplay examples so you guys can get an idea. But Varus poke champion you want to play him very very safe range at the back of the team fights or further back in lane and use your Q as your primary damage source on the enemy champions or to get last hits and in team fight scenarios you're going to use your R at a very safe distance on the back line by hitting the front line okay so let's say we had our allied dummies here a team fights about to break out how you'd want to position is behind your front line and then you're going to shoot your R on whoever's in the front. It's going to spread to the back line and you start throwing out Qs and dealing a bunch of damage. Okay, So your Q can deal damage to more than one champion or minion. That's important to remember. Okay, So it's great for pumping up that damage number in the game at the end for how much damage you actually well, dealt and having a big impact strong. on skirmishes or team fights because you can damage as many champs as the arrow hits. So so there's three champs here in a line, so we'll just hit all three of them. Alright, we dealt damage to all of them. So instead of just dealing 100 damage to one, 
one target, we were able to deal 300 damage just with that one Q because we hit all of these targets. Okay? So, let's head to lane now where we got a Kogma here who's already taken down our first turret, this aggressive guy. And we'll just start to poke him a little bit and, and lane and do some damage on him and show you guys how you can do this in a, a potential lane scenario. So the ability you want to max first with um, Varus is your Q. Again, just because we're going to be spamming that ability most. So in lane here, you can see he's already auto-attacking us. You just want to use that Q from range if you can. If, the, if you can step up and auto-attack, great, right? But generally, there's a lot of ADCs who are going to out-trade you just with auto-attacks alone. So our strength is Varus comes from being able to stay far back and snipe with Qs. If you're picking Varus, you want to be a sniper, okay? If you want to be an auto-attack heavy champ that just, you know, runs straight into another ADC and just auto-attacks them, play Draven, play somebody else who just has all their power in their auto-attacks. Varus is a little bit more of like a caster ADC. He relies more on using his abilities to deal his damage as opposed to just pure autos. So make sure you play him that way. Play him safe back and use your Q as your main wave clear, as your main uh, source of damage to enemy champs, and maybe even grabbing last hits at safe distance. E is great for this too. It doesn't deal the most damage in the world, but it does just help you clear out those minion waves a little bit faster. Okay, quick trick with the Q if you want to get it off really, really fast, right? Like just pressing it once like that, that you can just tap the Q. You don't have to hold it at all, right? And that way your movement speed doesn't get slowed too much. So you can just kind of quick tap it right just deal damage like that the range is still decent on it it's just nowhere close to what it would be if you held it down and actually wanted to like snipe from really really far look we can already hit this kogma from that far away there's no there's no way he can even damage us right and that's why varus is the sniper in this game you can literally damage people from distances where they can't do anything to you okay but just like a sniper if someone actually walks right up next to you, you're probably in a pretty bad situation. So we're going to recall here and just quickly talk about the items that you'd want to be rushing with Varus in your games. He is, again, that caster EDC or caster marksman because you can play him in the mid lane as well. So what we want to be rushing is items that really help us deal that big burst of damage on the poke spells and also allow us to poke more often. So that's going to mean cooldown. So you can see in the shop right here, the first three items that they're recommending to us are the Boots of Lucidity, which give us Ability Haste, so we can fire that Q off more often. We have the Dusk Blade here, which again gives us another 20 Ability Haste, but also 60 attack damage, which is a good chunk of attack damage off of a single item. And also Lethality, which means our Qs hit harder, especially if they don't have armor built yet. And then we also have Mana Mune, which gives us more Ability Haste, more mana to spam those Qs, and some attack damage that builds up throughout the game. So I've built a tier just as my first item in this game. Um, I like to play a little bit safer with Varus early on, focus on last hitting creeps generally and just poking with Qs when I can. I don't want to go too crazy and get into a bunch of skirmishes before I, I really get this tier stacked up and have my Dusk Blade built and I can start to actually maybe, you know, execute people who are like 25% health or really start to chunk people out. So uh, you want to rush Dusk Blade first. Uh, we're going to let our tier stack up throughout the game as you rush as you rush this item. So I'm just going to add some gold here so we can pick this up. And then depending on how much gold you have at the time of different recalls, you can either build out your man immune or you can pick up the lucidity boots. Uh, but essentially what you want to get to is getting these three items as your core build with Varus. Once you get these three items, you're going to be very, very powerful. Your Qs are going to deal a lot of damage. You're going to be able to start poking people out from a very yeah, safe range no and having a huge impact um, in those skirmishes and team fights. So we're going to still max our Q, and then we're going to come back to lane here and see if we can chunk out this uh, Kog'Maw for a good amount of damage. So we're going to level up a couple more times here because he's level 11. We'll just match him. Now obviously we have a lot more uh, damage than him because we have our first three items built. But just to give you an example of what these Qs might look like, again, you know, right, you're just chunking them out like that with a bunch of bunch of damage. So we'll use our W here on this one. We're going to press it before we Q. So we've pressed it. We're trying to Q. We're going to miss sometimes like I just did there. So 
it's tough. You're gonna ha again have to get used to when you want to use your Q and, and fire. And there's a few tricks you can use to fake the enemy champ out. So one of them is when you're holding Q, turn backwards so he doesn't know where you're gonna aim, and then just turn around really quick and fire at the last second. Okay, that way they're they're not sure where you're aiming. If you hold Q and you aim it forward like this, they can see where you're aiming. So you want to aim backwards and then just turn around at the last second, like this and let it go so they don't know where exactly you're going to be aiming at. That's a little bit more of an advanced move you can do with Varus as you're learning him, but even off the start you probably don't need to do that too much. So let's just combo this guy off one time and all in him next time he comes back to lane. What we're going to do is we're going to land our R on him, we'll shoot a Q and some autos and then use the E as well to keep him slowed uh, so we can continue to beat down on him and then that's how you're going to basically try and kill people. You're probably not going to 100 to 0 a lot of people on your own in 1v1s. What you're going to be looking to do with Varus is again sniping I people out who are like at 25%, 50% health from like a nice safe range, okay? If you get fed of course you can kill people. But what you're looking to do is snipe, right, 25% health, you stay safe, snipe again, 25% health, and then maybe now you're going to R, E, Q, auto and get a kill like that. Okay, so you want to play this guy like a sniper, you're not trying to get right next to people and 1v1 them at 100% health, right? You're trying to snipe people, you're trying to shoot them from range, stay safe, and <laughs> yeah, like just have fun destroying people at max range. With the Dusk Blade too, it's pretty funny because when you kill people with the passive on this Night Stalker, you're going to turn invisible after you kill somebody or get an assist. So you're essentially a sniper in a ghillie suit. It's really, really fun. So give him a try, guys. Uh, check out the posted gameplay for Varus for Dummies where we talk a little bit more in detail about team fights and laning against real uh, enemy you know PvP champs and that should give you everything you need to know to pick this guy up at a basic level. I'll catch you guys in the next one.